Remember stories like this from the late 1980s? In New York, Tracy Watson, who is six months pregnant, smokes crack cocaine, usually 20 vials, $100 worth a day. She knows the risks to her baby. Chances that the baby could come out premature, deformed, really is the health way. It can come out addicted, too. That was the grim future predicted for the so-called crack babies born to drug-addicted mothers, infants thought to be doomed for life with developmental and physical disabilities, destined to drop out of school or commit crimes. But that turned out not to be quite true. According to Maureen Black, a professor of pediatrics and epidemiology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, the crack baby scare was overstated and not substantiated. She is the lead author of a new review of 27 studies covering 5,000 children. The research found only subtle differences in the behavior of kids exposed to cocaine in the womb and those who weren't. In fact, some studies say the cultural assumptions about the crack babies may do more harm than the drug itself. For a closer look at the real impact of drugs on our society, I'm joined by Carl Hart, Associate Professor of Neuroscience and Psychology at Columbia University and the author of High Price, A Neuroscientist's Journey of Self-Discovery That Challenges Everything You Know About Drugs in Society. Back with me are also former judge and criminal defense attorney William Murphy, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine John Nichols, and editor-in-chief of GlobalGrind.com Michael Skolnick. So um, I want to start with you, Carl, because this um, book was really really, in fact, quite intense um, to read, in part because of moments like challenging our fundamental assumptions, like the crack baby narrative, about what drugs do and don't do to us. What are the big myths that we have about drugs? There are, there are multiple myths. I guess one of the biggest myths is that the majority of people who use drugs like crack, heroin, methamphetamine are addicted, mm -hmm. when in fact they are not. The vast majority of people who use drugs, for example, 85% or so, do so without a problem. But yet, most of our attention is focused on this small pathological uh, numbers of users. And when you say addiction, the way you define it in the text, you say an addiction is not just about regular use, right? That's just a pattern of behavior. Addiction is when it creates problems in your family life, in your work life, in your sense of self. And so you're saying that for 85% of drug users, that is not the circumstance. That's right. If One of the things that people will help people think about this more reasonably is just think about alcohol. We know people who use alcohol on a daily basis, a glass of wine here and there. Yeah, I live in New Orleans every uh, Exactly. Day. That's all exactly. Basis, right? <laughs> exactly. That's so, not even an indictment. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Problem if you don't. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So when we, think about, when we think about how we use alcohol in this society, mm -hmm. there are people who use cocaine in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to be clear. No one is suggesting it's a good idea to do cocaine or smoke crack while you're pregnant, right? That's any, any more than we would suggest it's a great idea to, to smoke or to drink while pregnant, right? But it is... A, or, the, not, or not to eat well, not to exercise, all of those things. That's right. And, and yet there is a way in which the social norms, the stereotypes that, were, that, that came as part of this kind of moral panic around it created real policy interventions. In fact, in some cities, the desire and the ability mm -hmm. and the laws to lock up women who were found with traces of, of cocaine in their system, that they could be incarcerated if they were pregnant. Yeah, uh, you're, you are a historian, well, you're a political scientist, but you know history. Yep. So if we go back at the turn of the uh, 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 20th century, early 1900s, these sorts of things were done with powder cocaine mm -hmm. in terms of black people. There was a 1914 article in the New York Times called The Negro Cocaine Fiend is a New Southern Menace, in which it was described that black people on cocaine uh, are more, mur more murderous, they are unaffected by bullets, they rape white women, a wide range of things. So drugs have always been used as an excellent scapegoat mm -hmm. to go after of those groups in which we don't like in this society. Now, one of the things I love most about the book is, is the way in which you talked about what happens to rats, right? right. So a lot of what we know about, about how brains um, respond to drugs has to do with what we know from animal studies. The idea that rats, when kept in lonely cages, solitary, without social supports, without other things to do, without sex, do a lot of drugs all the way to the point of death. But if they have, you know, a girl rat in there with them and they've got some friends and family and something to run around on, they do less drugs. 
Yeah, it's just like us. Uh, if we have some alternatives, some things that compete with drugs, somebody you like, uh, some other activity, uh, the likelihood of you using drugs, certainly to a pathological point, is decreased. Mm -hmm. And we know this, and we have known this. But the problem is, is that that hasn't been emphasized, in part because drugs are great scapegoats. Mm -hmm. They increase the budgets of not only law enforcement, but also researchers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I also, I actually, I, I love your research where, where you actually are giving, so I, I want to ask one last question, then we'll start to pull other folks in here because we're going to keep going on this. But this was, um, there were, I had a couple amen moments reading the book. We'll talk about some of it as we go forward. But one of it was just this, that the data show that teens who are either not caught or are given non-custodial sentences for their crimes related to drugs do better in terms of employment, education, and reduced recidivism than those who are incarcerated or otherwise removed. What that suggests to me, right, what those data suggest to me is that the problem isn't the drug use. The problem is being, like, so if you use drugs but you're never caught, i.e. if you are from a privileged community. In other words, if you're white. Right, right. White, white and privileged, right? You have to also be, so if you're a college exactly. student who's doing the drugs between classes, that the real problem, the, 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 the loss of employment, the loss of educational opportunities, the loss of social standing, comes from the incarceration, mm -hmm. from the arrest, mm -hmm. not from the drugs. Well, one of the things I tried to do in my book, in High Price, was to show, use myself as an example. Yep. Um, so if you look at me, I certainly did drugs as a youth. I certainly engaged in petty crime. And there were friends of mine who did the same thing, but they got caught. They got mm -hmm. caught up. Mm -hmm. They are currently, their lives are currently destroyed. I'm a professor, a tenured professor at Columbia. Yep. So, I mean, that's the sort of anecdote that supports the empirical information. Yeah, I mean, our, our last three presidents, uh, uh, I mean, yes. um, President Obama has admitted to, to having some recreational drug use, President Clinton to some recreational drug being aware aroundness. <laughs> touching and, it. Right, <laughs> <Not> touching <laughs> it, but not inhaling. <laughs> and, and, of course, a, a president who had an alcohol problem in the in And the also, 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 also marijuana. Yes. Right, yeah. Absolutely. All right, I'm bringing everybody else way, in as soon as right. we get back from the commercial because we are just getting started. <laughs> there, th this, uh, this book is setting the table for us, but we are talking about the drug war in black and white when we come back.